Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Spectrum Meltdown four years later. And there's a couple of reasons for that, and we'll talk about those right after this. So why am, after four years, why am I bringing this subject back up again? Because it's been a topic that of some popularity on YouTube lately. Some of, the, some of the YouTubers have been saying, just go ahead and turn off the mitigations, get your performance back, and don't worry about it. Because there's never been an exploit found in the wild, so there's no, no need to worry about any of this. Just turn it off, forget about it, you're fine. Why pay the penalty for all those mitigations and what it's doing to your system? So, uh, besides, um, <laughs> so, so I was I just was just like, what, really? What changed? So, what changed all of a sudden over the past four years about Spectre mitigation, Spectre meltdown mitigations that all of a sudden made it likely that we don't need them anymore? So, this is a bit of a reaction video, and it's also a bit of a. Let's clear this up and try to straighten this mess out. So clear up the confusion and explain what's been going on. This is from the original website uh, written by the, the, uh, the security researchers that found Spectre Meltdown to begin with. So there was a number of questions that came into them and they created this FAQ and it's really a nice one that's out there on their site and you can read it. So the first question that's in there is, Am I affected by this vulnerability? And the answer, their answer was, oh, yes, most certainly you are. Uh, yeah, there's uh, no escaping this one. Now, there were a couple of ARM-based, a couple of them, ARM-based CPUs, like the ones used uh, in the Raspberry Pi, that are immune to this uh, because Spectre Meltdown is speculative execution and branch prediction. So those two were the main things in Spectre Meltdown. The Raspberry Pi is totally immune to that. Why? And it has speculative execution or branch prediction. It doesn't do those. So, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. so that's a good way of uh, being able to prevent the problem in the first place is that the chip doesn't have that capability. So and they have been immune since the beginning. Um, the, other, the second question that people ask is, can I detect if someone has exploited uh, Meltdown or, or Spectre against me? And their answer was probably not. The whole thing is about the exploit is that it doesn't leave any traces in any traditional log file. So it's totally silent. And not only is it silent, but the data transfer rate, which is usually one of the triggers, if you see this huge spike of data flowing out of your system, you might go, wait a minute, what's going on here? But because Spectre Meltdown is such a low data transfer exploit, you may not even notice it because it's such a blip. It's nothing. So, yeah, those those two things are really kind of bad. So the other question was, all right, so will my antivirus uh, be able to offer me any protection against an attack? And their response was, yeah, maybe, maybe it will, uh, but unlikely because mal the malware that is developed around Meltdown Spectre, it's hard to distinguish from a regular benign application. So... Yeah, your antivirus may detect malware, which uses the attacks by comparing binaries, uh, but that's after the fact. That's after they become known, and it's already too late, right? So some people have been exploited already by it. Um, yeah, not good, not good. So what kind of data can be leaked? So if your system is affected, they wrote up a bunch of, I think it was five proof of concepts that uh, showed how the data could be exfiltrated from the cache memory and from main memory uh, and because the uh, because of the way that branch execution and branch prediction and speculative execution works so yeah the so the the type of data that can be exfiltrated of course would be anything that was in use at the time like a password to get into a system or some sensitive data that you might be moving around or it could be cryptographic keys that you use for SSH for example so has Meltdown or Spectre ever been abused in the wild? So the answer that they gave then, and I still have heard this today, we don't know. So how do you get from we don't know to there's never been one? How do you, you don't know that. I mean, you can't, you can't prove a negative. So <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but you can't prove a negative. Uh, the, 
the absence of something doesn't mean that it isn't there. So that's the, that's the point. It's in the military. They have to say is it's what you don't know that kills you. And, and that's true here too. It, the fact that you don't know something doesn't mean automatically that it's never been detected in the wild. It just means we don't know. The other one I hear, this is kind of a confused mess about, uh, so virtual machines are, so I don't run a virtual machine. I don't run a container. I don't, I'm not in the cloud, so I don't need mitigations, right? I don't know how that even started. So one of the things that one of the security researchers talked about early on with this was that that if you have virtual machines and containers, that normally you would you, you expect the sandboxing functions, uh, virtual manage, virtual machines and or containers to be able to offer a level of protection against data exfiltration because it's impossible to cross the fence and jump in and grab the data. However, with Spectre Meltdown, it operates at a level close to the CPU, which they all go through, and that defeats the the fence, <laughs> the the, the uh, sandbox, because it, it can blow right by the protection of the sandbox because it's not there. Uh, only thing that it means is that the virtual machines and containers offer you no, no additional protection, zero. And plus, the the protections offered by any of the operating systems like Android or iOS or Linux or Mac OS or Windows, that's out the window too. Every, I don't, no pun intended. So uh, every one of those people, Google and Apple and Microsoft, they've all been working on, on patches for Spectre Meltdown over the past four years. So yeah, you still need mitigations. <laughs> the other part of it on the virtual machine side of things is, is this one, is that since Spectre Meltdown attacks leave no trace at all, that's the point of the mitigations on any system, whether it be on cloud or edge or server or a home PC, a laptop, a phone or a tablet. Yeah, you still need mitigations uh, in order to try to combat a potential leak of data out of your system. So does it take, does it take somebody that has an unlimited budget to attack your machine and you're a high-profile target? No. Google proved that a few years ago that they could use JavaScript to exfiltrate data out of the system. In fact, they got the guy's password. They turned around and exploited his machine with his own password. Now, yes, that exploit has been closed. It's been fixed, so don't, don't worry about that one. But it just shows that, that uh, again, if there, we're, we're continuing to find exploits to Spectre Meltdown, even in 2022. There have been three CVEs written this year alone, two of them for Intel, one for ARM. AMD escaped uh, the the CVE because they don't exhibit the issue in their code. They kind of went out, even though they're a a compatible architecture to x86, they, they have done their own level of protections over time. But I don't think you're going to hear AMD stand up and say, nah, 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 we don't have this problem because uh, the minute they do find the problem affects them, they could get sued. (laughs) So I don't think you're going to hear them stand up and use that very heavily as a marketing ploy for their machines because, again, we're still finding exploits and, and, and the next one could very well be one that affects AMD. So the other one is I hear performance gets really hammered, like up to 30%. Oh my God, I don't want to give up that much performance. Well, neither do I. But for home users, that probably isn't the case. So Pharonix was the one that that surfaced this, and it was for a very specific workload that you probably won't have on a home machine. So if you're in a server farm with databases, yeah, you might. You, You might hit that particular exploit. Now, I know that in some cases, some people running Geekbench have seen up to 22%. Uh, but again, those are tailored workloads. Those aren't necessarily ones that you're going to hit. So be careful bantering around figures like, I mean, we always take the worst case, right? We always say, oh, well, that fish was 100 feet long. You won't believe Yeah, but it's not. So um, the average is somewhere between 2 and 10% uh, for home users. That's generally been the case, and that's been shown in a number of benchmarks over the past four years. There are times, however, that if you are happening to run a database, for example, that those workloads may put you in a higher hit rate uh, for performance hits because there's more 
uh, there's more speculative execution and there's more branch prediction that goes on in those kinds of cases. Web servers could possibly have it if they're heavy with code. So, so the other one is there's since there's never been an exploit in the wild, so I I don't need this mitigation anymore. Well, we don't know that. That's the whole point. We we don't know that. <laughs> and again, I'll bring that up. So there's a database called Virus Total, and people submit their their exploits to it, their malware to it that might be just proof of concept. But they submit to it, and then those that database, I guess, is sold to places that do antivirus software and malware detection systems. So, uh, but there have been two uploads specific to Spectre meltdown in the past year. So that we know of, that we know of, um, yeah. So <laughs> saying it, that it hasn't been found in the wild, well, it might be proof of concept code. But the fact that the proof of concept code is out there, that means that somebody could grab that and develop an exploit. Yeah. Now, do they have to have millions of dollars to hit your machine? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. So I don't mean to be paranoid about this, but the best way to, to, uh, uh, the best way to uh, handle this, so it's been four years. Can I just disable it and be done with it? So I, I can't recommend that to you, and nor would I. Uh, they're still finding new exploits even in 2022. Like I said, there's three that were opened this year alone. The exploits are difficult, if not impossible, to detect. And that right there is enough for me to run them because if you can't detect something, you won't even know you're hit until it's too late. So there's three ways to fight Spectre Meltdown. First, a number of them, like Intel and AMD and ARM, all three of them, have developed firmware code for the CPU that bypasses the known Spectre Meltdown. Uh, so if you have that firmware code, then you have some level of protection from that. The other way is uh, Intel and AMD's new processors that are coming out are building in protections against Spectre Meltdown uh, as far as what's known, right? So. As far and we put that again. So as far as the exploits that are known are being built in as as uh, mechanisms into the existing CPU, so they've been redesigned, and they do help. Um, but and then there's number three. But the but is <laughs> if a vulnerability shows up later that that particular uh, design doesn't doesn't address, then you're we're back to where we were four years ago. So the other one is fix the software that surrounds. Uh, the uh, uh, the CPU in order to prevent this problem f to begin to begin with. So in practice, so far the best way to combat Spectre meltdown is item one, which is download new firmware code, and number three, fix the software. Together, those seem to be the most effective means to combat Spectre meltdown so far. So we've kind of beat this to death a little bit uh, in that if, if you're on a virtual machine or container, that who cares? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, those don't offer you any protection at all, and neither does a standard system. They're all equally vulnerable. And that's the point. So the other thing is that just because something hasn't been discovered doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And, and you can't go through, you, you can't, if you can't prove something, the best way to do is if you can't prove that somebody's gonna break into your house, the best thing to do is to lock your doors, right? So, I mean, common sense. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there for today. I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about this. Leave me a comment below and tell me uh, what you think about all this. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. Uh, please take care. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Bye for now.